the Lord. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for Jesus for me, please. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise. There is none like him. There is none that can be likened unto him. He is reliable. He is trustworthy. You can depend on him. You can experience his grace every single day. The Bible says in him we live, we move, we have our being. And because he is alive and we live and move in him, then we have hope for tomorrow. Because it cannot be dethroned, then we are sure our tomorrow is certain. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Give it give to heaven for him. Hallelujah. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The Lord is faithful because he makes the workings of the path of the just to shine brighter. The Bible says our goings are of the Lord. And because our goings are of the Lord and he makes our path shine brighter and brighter, we are secure. Tell your friend, I'm settled. settled. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the least that you will know about me. Say it. Watch out. Watch out. This is the least you will know about me. I'm on my way higher. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Let's shout hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for the privilege. Now, I want to say this first of all before we sit down. That my wife and I and all the people we came together, we actually came to be part of the retreat. And uh, for me, it's a privilege to be able to preach the gospel. I look forward to it because I know I'm called. And when that door opens, I just put all I have into it. But every instance that I go to minister by his grace, I go to receive from him. All right? So this evening and tomorrow, the whole of tomorrow, I am looking unto heaven. Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's then the midst of them. Right. The Bible says at the presence of the Lord and his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So I want to receive pleasure. Amen. Rejoice Amen. in his presence. So don't look out for a speaker. Look out for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For our eyes are on him. Yes. And as our eyes are on him, the Bible says we behold him and we are not ashamed. So we will not be ashamed. Amen. Praise God. So that's the information I want to let you know. And because I'm expectant, you should be expectant. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate my wife for being here with me this weekend. Anytime I go with her, I know that it's a double power. No, no, just, just trust me. Praise God. And um, every relationship that I have kept up to date, I have found out that nothing is insignificant. I want to respect the honor and the grace upon Pastor, Pastor Tunde and, um, and Pastor Bosse. I want to honor you this evening. Thank you for inviting me. And um, God bless you mightily. When we met, many years ago when we met, we didn't know we were meeting as colleagues. I thought I was meeting as somebody who was senior. But we are serving together in the vineyard of the kingdom today. The Lord bless you and renew your strength every single day. In Jesus' name. Pastor Ben, thank you. And your wife, thank you. I've, I've gone to your website. And I've been blessed by your message. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to trust God for heaven's openness to remain open. And I want you to do the same. Father, we thank you. You are faithful. Father, we give you glory. Our eyes are on you. You are dependable. You are reliable. Father, tonight we speak as the oracle of the Lord. Cause my pen, my, my mouth, my tongue to be like the pen of the ready writer. Let me hear from heaven. Let me speak accurately with precision and with simplicity. Give me unction to function. Let your people hear well. Let your ministration be acceptable to the saints. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. We may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm talking on the kingdom of kings and priests. The kingdom of kings and priests. We will go into the world and we will trust God to release his ministry. 
Now let's begin from the book of Revelations, chapter 1. Kingdom of kings and priests. The Bible says in verse 4 to verse 6, the John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and had made us kings and priests unto God, and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Bible says there, it says, unto him who has washed us. It says, who has loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Unto him who has called us and washed us from our sin by his blood. And that forms the bedrock of everything we're talking about this weekend, the foundation of who we are and who we will ever be is established on the redemption, on the finished work on Calvary, on the efficacy of the blood, and that makes a whole lot of a difference to us. But now when he did that, the Bible says, he had made us kings and priests unto God. So not only did he save us, but if we believe he saved us, if we believe he washed us by his blood, then we must believe the next statement. Hallelujah. Now, if we believe he saved us, and we know we have no doubt we are born again, then we have no doubt that he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory forevermore. Say to the next person to you, I am a king and priest unto God. Praise God. Now, that's where to begin. So when you got born again, he didn't just save you and forgive you of your sins and then he stopped there. No. You got born again, you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and the work of the blood did his work in your life, and you qualified to enter the reign of kingship and priesthood unto God. Praise God. Now look at the book of Revelation again, chapter 5, verse 9. The Bible says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So now not only did he say that he has made unto us kings and priests, but now he said we shall reign where? On the earth. Where would we reign? Where would we reign? If you believe you're born again, let me see your hand up. Hallelujah. Thank you. Put your hand down. Now if you believe, therefore, that you have been made king and priest unto God, can I see your hand up? Thank you very much. Now, if you believe you will reign on the earth, based on what the Bible says, can I see your hand up? Praise God. Now, that's the end of our weekend retreat. That's where we're actually going. That's a summary of what we're saying this weekend. And God is looking on to you to believe what he said in his word. God has been waiting on you for so long. He's waiting to see when you will embrace the truth of God's word. And let it make a difference, not only in your life, but in the world where you find yourself in. I'll be talking about that tomorrow. There are many worlds represented here. In your world. God sent you there to reign in the earth in your world. And God has called me and, and, and given me a word to charge what is already in your spirit, man, to come alive. So that the world may rejoice. So that the world may celebrate and say, thank God, at last they have come. Praise God. Bible says in the book of 1 Peter 2, 9, the Good News Version says, But you are the chosen generation, chosen race, the king's priests, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim 
the wonderful acts of God. Chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Many times we think he's calling us only to say, come get born again. Not just that. You have an anointing and a calling to proclaim his wonderful acts. Do you know that you would have been struggling now if there was no airplane? Do you know we would have been struggling now if there was no vehicle at least to ride five hours from, from St. Paul to here? Those are wonderful acts of God. Those are wonderful acts of God. Do you know it would be terrible there was no light? Those are wonderful acts of God. Every resource that man, humanity needs is in the earth. The Bible says even kings are blessed by the resources of the earth. Even kings. Now, he has called you, anointed you, to cause the wonderful acts of God to bring the goodness of God to mankind. And you are anointed for that. Hallelujah. Look at that in Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So the people that God has ordained to reign in this life are those that have received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. So when he gave them grace, he gave them the gift of righteousness, he did that that they may reign in death, in life, by Christ. When the Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory, it's not just talking about heaven. Mm. A Christ in you is the hope of the world, actually. Yes, sir. Yes. Glory though. Yes, sir. Christ in you is the solution that mankind is waiting for. Mm. Believe me honestly. Yes, the Bible says, and darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yes, sir. Bible says, see, many of them, they're going to gather unto you. Your children will come from far and near, and they will rejoice because you have caught the vision of what heaven has in store for them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are kings and priests unto God. Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, why must we preach this? It's because God knows it is true. God put it there, but it is true. God knew this about before you were born again. God has established this. He has. Now, go back to the, I like King James because he has a word of using the word. He, H-H-A-T-H, means he has. He's done it. He's done it. He has made us. I was a made. That's past tense. He has made us kings and priests unto God. So God knows it's done. God knows the moment you got born again, there is something you are, you are, you are something that the world is waiting for to happen. But you see, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So why must we preach it? Is that you may have faith to believe and faith to release the greatness in the inside of you. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes, sir. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of food, rivers of healing, rivers of finances, rivers of knowledge of witty invention. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes, Hallelujah. So faith comes by the word that you may release out of your belly to the world to rejoice. Hallelujah. The Bible says, these people have I formed for myself that they may show forth my praise. So when God formed you, and God called you, and God anointed you, is that you may show forth his praise. When God called you and gave you the grace to be born again, is that what you thought was useless in your life, he will use it to his glory. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. This weekend, I will be different in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We are kings. We are priests unto God. Now let's hold on a little bit here because there's a difference or an advantage or a benefit that the believers have. 
In the Old Testament, for example, the kingly and the priestly ministers were separate. They didn't have the privilege to join them together. So when the Bible says in Revelation that he has called us and washed us by his blood and made us king and priest, we can only get to the realm of combining them because of the blood. Yes, Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Now, in the Old Testament, the kings and the priests carried separate anointing. Saul was going to combine it and he lost his throne. In within two years of being um, anointed as king. He lost his throne. Why? Because he was going to become a king and priest. It's not, it's not given unto him. But unto it is given. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Unto you it is given. Amen. That's why faith must rise in your spirit, man. Amen. That's why change must come in our mentalities. Amen. Glory to God. Today, in the New Testament, therefore, we can combine it because we are a kingdom of kings and priests unto God. Amen. A priest stands for vision. Priestly ministry stands for intermingling with divinity. Seeing what heaven says. Relating with the Almighty God. Ministering unto him. We can learn a lot from that. From even in the Old Testament, how do they do it? What happened when they do it? And then the king represents provision. So when there's a combination of the vision and the provision, there is an advancement of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And that's why God located you where you are. That's why it's not by chance you are in Calgary or wherever you live or which business you do, what trades you have in your hands. I want faith to rise in the hand, in the faith, in the eyes, in the mind of a, of, of a fashion designer here tonight. Come on. I want faith to rise in the minds of an hairdresser here tonight. I want faith to rise in the mind of an academic here tonight. I want faith to rise in the mind of any businessman here tonight. There's an anointing to fulfill your ministry in your marketplace. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord God. Now, now this is God's mind that I've been mandated to release. This is God's mind. You are not in your field by chance. You are not in your vocation by chance. In fact, if somebody told you, is that what you are doing? Tell them I'm anointed for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell them I'm anointed for it. Glory to God. Amen. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah 2, 1 to 2 says, The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall be established, exalted above the hills. All nations shall flow into it. All nations. The mind of God is that the church of Jesus Christ will be so located that all men will say, where is their God? Let me go worship the God that they serve. Mm. Ten people will hold to your skirt and say, show me your God. Take me to your house. I will serve the Lord your God you serve. Now, where will that happen? Yeah, God wants to show his grace in the four walls of the church. Wonderful. Yeah, he will. But much more so, he's throwing you in the marketplace so that men of all nations, ever say nations. nations. Say it again. Nations. nations, tribes, reasonings, walks of life, groups of people can, can be able to discover you there and say, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve your God. If you come to church alone, in fact, we are just one nation kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And then you can just be enjoying our fellowship together right there. But you see, when God throws you right there in the marketplace, there's a nation you're supposed to serve there. There's a world you're supposed to serve there. There's a light you will shine there and then you become a king in the marketplace because you are a priest unto our God. Glory to God. We'll spend more time to talk about that. But in the meantime, tonight, I want to throw light into this, what we're talking about. I just want to throw that and, and stir your faith up. And one reason why your faith has to be stirred up is not just because of yourself. It's because of the people who are waiting for your manifestation. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom, you have made them all. That is a wisdom by which God made the whole world. 
Now, that wisdom, God wants to give a portion of it to you. Because in the world you represent, they are waiting for God there. So God said, I'm waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Wisdom in fashion design, wisdom in the academic, wisdom in research. Do you know that there is nothing new under heaven? I call every new innovation discoveries. I choose the word discoveries. Because you can't make any new thing. Do you know the Bible says there is nothing new under heaven? Is that the Bible? It's the Bible. If the Bible says there is nothing new under heaven, why would you think there is nothing new under heaven? There is nothing new under heaven. Everything you find has been there. But it becomes discoveries. It becomes inventions. Because we discover it. Every invention actually is a discovery. Because God knew what we need today, he put it in the world. He knows what we need tomorrow, he has put it in the world. He's just waiting for you to discover it. And that's the anointing you carry within you. The Bible says, we have the Holy One in our spirit man. The anointing we carry, we need no man to teach us anything. We always think it's just about the Bible. That no man teach you nothing. Because of the Holy Ghost inside you. It's not just talking about the Bible. It's talking about the knowledge of witty inventions. So the world is waiting for you to tap into that wisdom of heaven that you might be able to answer questions that humanity will need tomorrow. Canada or any part of the world where we are right now actually always needs someone to discover something new. That life may become better. Tomorrow I'll tell you, I'll run you through the automobile industry graduation, and you'd be amazed if God did not put or allow some of those people in the, in the, in the very important milestones in the world will have still been in dark ages today. But I was hoping that the church will wake up. Psalm 110, verse 1. The Bible says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauty of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast a dew of thy youth. Amen? Sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. He said, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. So the strength of God is in Zion. The rod or the scepter or the, the rulership of God comes from Zion. So Zion is supposed to rule, to dominate, to subjugate, to crumble and to to have dominion over the whole world. Amen? So if we believe this, it means we must then look into it and work towards it and ensure that everywhere we find ourselves, this begins to be the character of what we do in there. Hallelujah. That's what God is saying. So if I am in any field of endeavor now, God wants to rule there. He wants to send forth the world, the run of his strength, in the academic, out of Zion. He wants to send the rod of his strength in, in, in any business endeavor out of Zion. He wants, in fact, when I was on campus, there was a guy who was sent you know, to, to study, I think, physics or something like that, and was designing a computer at that time, but was dedicated to the Oracle before he came to school. But he got born again on the campus, and got delivered. He's preaching the gospel now. Hallelujah. But the point is, the devil packages some people into the different fields so that they can go and rule there. Do you know that the devil packages some people into the fashion designing field? Yeah. They don't want you to wear trousers that will stay in your, in your waist. They don't. They want you to wear trousers that when you bend, everything begins to drop. That's what they want. They want you to wear trousers so that when the ladies wear it, always their underpants is showing. That is the devil's plan. 
for you are anointed, you are in the fashion design industry, you can't change it. You can't correct it. You can't get new vision for it. Can't get new insight for it. How would they do a trouser that the death would be so short? I want you to hear me. I want to, to hear God. Somebody got the idea that I will perpetuate evil in my jeans. I will perpetuate evil in jeans that they wear. The death is so short. What will you do? You can pull it tomorrow. It will drop. Because the death is small. I, nobody told me this. I sat down. I looked at it. I said, what? This is a strategy of the enemy. And God called you into that. Who, who is in fashion design industry here? Who is in fashion design industry? Please stand up and come. And please come. Please come. Any other person in that industry here? Any other person in that industry here? We're going to use that as a point of contact. The Bible calls knowledge of witty inventions. Amen. Knowledge of witty inventions. Amen. Insight from heaven. To make changes in your feet of endeavor. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive for you unusual grace, Amen. unusual help, Amen. unusual insight, Amen. unusual wisdom. Amen. And everyone in your feet you will encounter, Amen. impart unto them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May you see the visions of heaven. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a seat. I, I want you to hear me. I, I am not here to preach at you. That's a revolution God wants to take place in this weekend. Amen. In your field of endeavor, your eyes will begin to open to some things that will transform the world through the works of your hand. Amen. In education. Do you know that in the educational sector, there is a conspiracy happening? Yes. Oh God, we will open your eyes. Do you know in the computer industry, there are some things God wants to use to advance his kingdom you are yet to see and sell to us that we may advance the gospel. Do you know in the medical field there are some things yet to come to light that many are dying because you haven't seen it? The Bible says, these people have I formed to show forth my praise. It is because the world needs you. That's why you're there. That's why you're there. Hallelujah. Now, Romans 5.17 again. For if by one man's trespass, death reigned through that one, much more, much more, surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as king in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So there's an anointing you carry through whom you will reign in your field. Oh, may faith rise in your spirit, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. So what we're saying here, when you combine all these scriptures, God has mandated you. And anointed you. And gifted you. And graced you. To run in the marketplace. So why are we preaching? Faith, come back here. Hearing the word of God. Look at Micah chapter 4. Very popular scripture. Micah 4 from verse 1 to 2. Bible says, But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains. It shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, the house and the God of Jacob, we may teach us his way. Did you see that? That he may teach us his way, we may walk in his path, for the law shall go forth out of Zion. Everybody say the law. The law. Say it again, please. One more time. The law. the law shall go forth out of Zion. The word of the Lord shall go from Jerusalem. The law. The instructions, the law, the doctrines, the law, the regulations, the law, the teachings, those four things stand for the law. So in the body of Christ, the mind of God is that the regulations will come from the church. The yardstick will come from the church. 
The standards will come from the church. The benchmark will come from the church. Where is the wisdom? It's in the church. Listen, the first university that was established in the States, you can go and research into it, was established to train pastors. Right now as I speak, the budget of that university every year is more than the national budget of some nations. And the beginning of that college was to train pastors. And for donkey years, the leaders of that university was always a pastor. Until when it changed to become, you know, balance of... So the foundation, look at, look at technology, education, look at medicine. Where I come from, we got to new education, medical health, and all those because the gospel came. Listen, the law, the instructions, the doctrines, the regulations are supposed to come out of Zion. Don't go to the accounting industry and think you're just going to read their book. The Bible says, I have understanding more than with my teachers. I have understanding more than the ancient. Why? Because your law is my meditation. So in the word of God is what it takes to form the law. Do you know, when I was in, college, in, in, in the university, when I was an academic in Nigeria, for example, I went to the Bible and discovered that actually I was doing a research that began from the Bible on the brick industry. You know it began in the Bible. Where did they find straw to reinforce the bricks? In the Bible. And I, and I began to do fresh research towards a PhD from what was already in the Bible. Every industry finds its link to the Word of God. Right. It is the Word of God that gives you knowledge of which invention. Now, why then do you carry that anointing and not use it? Or that grace and that anointing is not flowing forth. It's because you need, a, you need a new anointing, fresh anointing, fresh grace, fresh unction upon your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when God spoke about David, he said, I have found David my servant. With holy oil have I anointed him. And the Bible says in Psalm 92, it says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I was a fresh oil. So when God called David, the first thing he did was to anoint him. And in Psalm 92, he was talking there about anointing with fresh oil. So maybe the release of those giftings are not flowing forth because we are lacking of fresh oil. And that's why I will go to God and say, Lord, anoint me a fresh Lord. A fresh Lord. Because he says, he that anointed us and called us is God. And he has made us kings and priests unto our God then why am I not flowing? Maybe I need a new anointing. Hallelujah. If you go through the Old Testament, when God called Moses to do all the work in the tabernacle, all the work of the house of the Lord they were supposed to do, he, God, Bible says, God called unto him Bezalel and Aholia. Bezalel and Aholia were wise people. They were crafted people. They were gifted in craftings and in all manner of workmanship. You know what was amusing to me? Bible says, and I've anointed them. Open your Bible to the book of Exodus, please. Let's just go into that a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus 31. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Exodus 31. Hallelujah. Anointing with fresh oil. Help us anointing with fresh oil. Say it again. Anointing with fresh oil. Anointing with fresh oil. Now, where you are, it's not by chance. You just need to know God sent you there, located you there, and the world is waiting for you there. But how do I flow forth for the world to manifest? Anointing with fresh oil. Verse 1. The Lord spoke unto Moses. Exodus 31 now. See, I have called by name Bezali, the son of Uri, the son of all of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting stones. Did he say to preach? No. He, he, he didn't just say to preach. Because really speaking, you are preaching in that world that you represent. Yes, sir. That's it. That's 
You are preaching. What is preaching, really? Declaring. Speaking. All right? What you have received, what you have believed. When you go and do research, I mean, when I was still in academics, you want to go and do research and come and present what you found. You preach it. Why do they call them professors? That saying, that professing, that declaring what they have found out. That's what the Bible says. What we have known, we have taught, we have felt of the word of life we give unto you. Amen. So when God gives you grace in your field of endeavor, you begin to preach. Hallelujah. You begin to preach. In fact, the funny thing for me was that when I was an academic, many times I would get to my classroom and I want to be teaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching. And before I knew I would say, praise God. And the students know me already. They would just, they would just say, ah. Because you can't separate the anointing you carry from your field of endeavor. I need to say that again. You cannot separate the anointing you carry from your field of endeavor. Many of us think anointing is just to preach. No. You are anointed to fulfill your purpose in life. So when you go to your workplace, don't say, I'm not in church now. So I'm a natural man. You are not a mere man. You are anointed. So you go to your office as an anointed person. So God was speaking about this man here. Hear this. And I think this is where many people make this mistake. Anointing, the pursuit of the anointing is not just for the preachers. No. Okay, let me give you a story. I have a friend of mine. My best man, and now he's a preacher of the gospel. We all got born again somewhere in the same church, first grade church, many years ago. A few years ago, quite a bit. Praise God. Now, he, he was working in a bank. And he has a senior who we were in the same church, but he's own you know, frontline manager. And one day he called the man. The man was on a 100 day of fasting and prayer. He was a banker, was a manager in a bank. He was not a preacher. Maybe he was a Sunday school teacher or something like that, but was not a pastor, really. So he asked, his, he asked, his, he asked his, the brother. I knew him too, you know. was our senior. He said, ah, Olga, what do you want again? You are a senior manager in this bank. Every Monday morning, the man is coming from the camp. Throughout the week, he's working. He's coming. He goes to retreat. He comes back. He's on a hundred day of fasting and prayer. So the man asks him, what are you looking for? He just smiles. He just smiles. Two years ago, I asked my friend when, I, when we were together in Lagos, what about so-and-so? He's a much more senior person in his bank now. You need anointing to go to the next level. Yeah. Anointing, the pursuit of the anointing is not just for preachers. Now, you will find out you become tired easily when you are not anointed. You become weary easily when you are not anointed. You become furious easily when you are not anointed. When you are weak in your spirit, man, your work does not come beautiful anymore. The anointing for exploits, you need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So God spoke to him. I have anointed him. Look at verse 4. To devise cunning works. To design the next dress that will be beautiful and will glorify God at the same time. To work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cotton of stone. To design some architectural work that will be beautiful and economical and glorify God and something that somebody would just say, oh, this is good. And they'll come and buy what you sold. To design some things in the computer network that people have not known existed. To find some thoughts that they will celebrate. What field are you? To find something new in your field. It's an anointing for it. Hallelujah. He says, and I, and I, look at this. And I, behold, verse 6, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, listen to this. In the heart of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom. That they may make all that I have commanded you. In the heart of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom. There is something more than the human wisdom, natural wisdom. Something more. When you carry it, men will give space for you. (laughs) Hallelujah. When you carry it, men will say, oh, yeah, okay, now we bow. They will carry their buttocks for you. Praise God. Now, God, praise God, hallelujah, 
God spoke very clearly to, to Moses. Look at, look at the living translations here in verse 4 and 5. He's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and carving wood. He's a master at every craft. You may think, oh, this guy is good enough. But a master at every craft, God called him and said, what? I have anointed him. So maybe you are gifted. We are not anointed. That's why. That's why the marketplace is still suffering. You went to school. You are highly skilled. You've been trained. But not anointed. He's, he's, he's excellent craftsman. He is great. But before he can do what I gave you vision to do, he must be anointed. That's why again, in Psalm 89, it says, I have found my servant David with the holy oil. I've anointed him. With the holy oil. I've anointed him. You need a new anointing. I need a new anointing. And if you can have fresh anointing, fresh grace. Look at verse 6 again. It says, I have, verse 6 in King James, and it says, And behold, I behold, I have given with him a holy the son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan, and in the heart of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. And look at the living translation now of the same verse. Living translation says, And I have personally appointed a holy son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant. Moreover, I have given special skills to all gifted craftsmen so that they can make all the things I have commanded you to make. I have given what? Special skill to all gifted craftsmen. There's something super upon your natural. Hallelujah. There's something. I have given special skill. So that they can, upon all their giftedness. Listen, there's nobody on earth without a gift. There's nobody on earth without something to offer. Otherwise, God won't send you here. I'm telling you. God sent you on this surface of the earth because there's something you have to offer. Every, every, single, person, every single person. Including me. Including Say it again. Every single person. Every single person including, me. including me. Now, you have something in you. To offer. But God says, I'm anointing you to offer that thing. So what's my heart cry today? Lord, anoint me afresh. That's my heart cry. Fresh me, Lord. Fresh anointed. Fresh grace. Anointed with fresh oil. Not old anointed. Fresh oil. New anointing every morning. Fresh oil. Fresh grace. Fresh release. Fresh strength. Fresh help. Fresh. I need the seven folds. Look at Jesus. The prophecy about Jesus Christ in the book of Isaiah. Let's open to it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 11 from verse 1. Isaiah 11 from verse 1. Bible says, And there and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and mind, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Look at, look about Jesus Christ. Now you see, Jesus Christ is son of God and son of man. So when he came as son of man, he was anointed to fulfill his role as the son of God. Look at that, he had to need the fulfillment of the Holy Ghost upon his life. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the Lord upon, of understanding, of counsel, of might, of knowledge, of the fear of the Lord. When this sevenfold spirit of God rests upon your life, you shall be of quick understanding. You shall be of, you will not judge by the sight of men. You will not do your business in the natural way men are doing it. You will not go to your marketplace as a mere person. When a fresh unction comes upon your life, you will operate by that fresh unction and you will bring out things that nobody had known was there before. And, be and meanwhile, it's always been there. Always been there. Everything has always been there. 
but it's waiting for you to bring it out to the surface that men may enjoy the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for a new anointing tonight? Yes, sir. I want to be anointed afresh. I want grace afresh upon my life. This weekend, that's my desire. I want to leave this place this weekend and say, I'm able to take the mountain. I want to leave this weekend, this place, and say, Lord of heaven, in my, 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 in my workplace, in my field, in the world I represent, I want to show your praise. As I for the one. These people, have I formed that they may show you my, my praise? He formed you and sent you in the field. Mention the field you're in. Just say it randomly. Everybody, mention your field. Just say, just keep saying it. I'm in this. Just say who you are. Medicine. Teacher. Fashion designer. Just say it out. Just say it. Just say it. Make a loud noise. Make a loud noise with it. Just say it. If you're in school for it, keep saying it loud. All right. Say, I'm anointed for that field. I'm anointed for that field. Now, in that field, there is a fresh unction that God is releasing upon you tonight. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, I'm going to spend time beginning from tomorrow morning to deal with soft skills that we need to imbibe to make the anointing to flow forth. But the beginning of it is the anointing upon my life. That's where it begins from. And the anointing begins and is charged and is quickened in the place of prayer. When you seek unto the Lord and the Bible says that they that will be able to hide themselves and spend time with God to be able to receive what God has in store. Now listen to this. There's a story of Micaiah and Zedekiah. I'm sure you must have heard the story of Micaiah and Zedekiah. In 1 Kings 22, from verse 1 to 28. You know the story there that um, King Ahab, he woke up with the idea that Ramoth and Gilead belongs to Israel. And he said it was time to pick it up and fight against Syria. So he can recover Ramoth Gilead, right? Then he asked King Jehoshaphat to go to battle with him. Jehoshaphat agreed, no doubt about that. But then he asked, let's first consult a prophet. Let's see God's will about this task. So King Ahab did something. He quickly rallied 400 of his prophets and all the men of, uh, you know, all the ones that seek, you know, all the prophets that you will consult. You know what they all did? They unanimously said, go! All of them, 400 prophets. <laughs> the Bible says in verse 6, they said, go up, for the Lord shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. The Oshaphat insisted and they said, let's seek a second opinion. Is there no other man of God here? He said, well, there is one man that is nothing good from his mouth. <laughs> Forget about that guy. He said, well, let him come all the same. Then they called him. The interesting part of it is that when they called him, they had warned him. All the prophets came and warned him, my friend. All of us said he must go. Because every now you come and say nonsense here now. We have all agreed, we all know he must go to fight. Don't say nonsense here. I said, oh yeah, whatever God tell me, I'm going to say. And then he got there. There I go. Then the king, I know you. Tell me what God is telling you. There's one interesting part there. That I see. You see, and the Bible says about Jesus. Jesus will not see like an average person will see. All right? For you to shine in the marketplace, you don't see like an average person will see. Yes, sir. Come on. There have been many prophets in your field of endeavor. But God anointed you. Okay? Now, look at verse 23 and 25. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. The Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Shenana, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Zedekiah, I mean, he came, he came and said, don't, don't, okay, you want to tell you the truth? The truth is, don't go. Because all these people, there's a lying spirit in their mouth. He was telling the king that. While Micaiah was telling the king that, Zedekiah said, 
Wow! Who is speaking to you? If God is speaking to you, where am I that God is speaking to you? Where did God pass to come and reach you? <laughs> That's exactly what he was saying. Where did God pass to come and reach you? Look at verse 2. <laughs> Praise God. When you begin to discover new things, people will say, how come you know that? Here is the answer you will give them. He said, but, verse 24, but the kind son of Shenana went near and smote my car on the cheek and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak to you? <laughs> my said, behold. behold. Everybody said, behold. Behold. Thou shalt see in that day when you shall go into an inner chamber to hide yourself. When will you know when men don't know when you go and hide yourself? When will you hear? When, when don't hear? When you go and hide yourself? When will you see the vision that nobody saw? When you go and what? Hide yourself. In the presence of God, you will get the fresh unction, fresh power, fresh anointing, fresh revelation, fresh ideas. God wants to speak to you in night seasons. I bless the Lord for he, he, my reins, my mind, instruct me in night seasons. Psalm 16, verse 7. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My mind, my reign, instruct me in night seasons. God wants to instruct you in night season. God wants to show you knowledge of witty invention in night seasons. God wants to open your eyes to what nobody has ever seen as you intermingle with divinity. As you conduct your priestly ministry, God wants your eyes to see what nobody has seen. Amen? Yeah. Bible says in the Bible, says, Father, open my eyes and grant me a fresh desire for a fresh anointing. That's my prayer. Fresh desire, fresh hunger, and fresh impartation of a new anointing. I want to talk to the Lord. I, I, I won't delay us too much tonight. We're going to pick up from there tomorrow. I know that tomorrow is loaded. But tonight, I'd like us to pray. What do you need to make a difference? New anointing. What do you need to go and take over in the marketplace? What? Fresh unction. Fresh anointing. I have called Bezalel and Aholiab. Many of us here, God called us as Bezalel and Aholiab. And he wants to impart us with fresh unction, fresh grace, fresh anointing. It is not just for you. If you don't want it, somebody is waiting to, for you to answer their cry. The world needs it. Humanity needs it. The business award needs it. The nation needs it. Hallelujah. The church needs you. Please stand on your feet. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord. In the place of prayer, in the place of intercession, in the place of intermingling with heaven, new ideas come. Fresh insight come. Fresh revelation come. Fresh understanding in your field of endeavor. Come, I want you to hold your field of endeavor in your hand like this, literally. Say, Lord, I present my skills to you afresh. He said, all those that are gifted and skilled, I have given them special skill. There's something called God breathing upon your giftings. Go and cry to heaven and say, Lord, I present my life, my career, my giftings to you. Give me fresh skill, fresh giftings, fresh unction, fresh enablement, fresh power, fresh insight. Fresh, 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 fresh. Fall on me, anointing fall on me, anointing, anointing, fall on me, anointing, anointing. <laughs> The power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Fall on me. 
presence of the Lord is here and the heaven is open to release everything that hinders your work supernatural ability of God wants to take over your natural ability as you open your mouth and cry to heaven and say Lord I bring my vessel not a few I bring my vessel not a few fill me up with a fresh grace fresh anointing fresh wisdom fresh knowledge Fresh favor, fresh insight, fresh power, fresh power, fresh power, fresh insight in my field of endeavor. A cat to petaria, 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 recopetomilia, recatusa tapa patalia. 
Rekule Kusto Braka Toso Braka Te Rekule Duso Peria Rekuso Brike Babahaya Fresh 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 anointing Fresh anointing Fresh anointing upon my life Upon my work Upon my skills Upon my enablement, fresh capacity. Galaka who became a packet, liquor packet, packet, tell you about Rikaki Laka Dope, Haka Laka Dupe Haka for the Bahia. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Mangle of a cost of a custom. She rebels, skin rebels. Shinge the boy, shinge the boy, fresh oil, 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 anoint me, Lord, anoint me, Lord, anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. Fresh anointed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. You may, be, you may be at the point where you have received warnings. The Bible says in Psalm 92, it says, But my horn, verse 10, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Verse 11, Mine eyes also shall see my desire of my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. 
Sometimes you have not been able to perform well. And your boss has a reason to say, this guy, just one more time and he's going to be out. But when a new anointing comes, what used to be bad, when a new anointing comes, what, when a new anointing comes, where they used to tolerate you, they begin to celebrate you. I want you to pray for a new anointing. Open your mouth and pray. Seek God. Seek God. Seek God. Rebosh. Rebosh. Eika tosote. Eika tosote. Eika tosote. Eika tosote. Rebosote. Pato. 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 Rebosote. Brand rebosh. Brand rebosh. Brand rebosh. Brand rebosh. Brand rebosh. Brand rebosh. New anointing, Father. 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 Ray. Sobele baba baba. Mangla baba 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 baba. Rebosh. Kasaja baba baba baba. Mangla baba. Mangla baba. Reboko soto ya baba. Repo baba baba kasanda kani baba baba. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Reggae, 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 Rabus, Rabus, Santa Cate. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is releasing upon your life and my life an unusual insight. The Bible says, Isaiah 11 3. And he shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reproof after the hearings of his ears. In your field of endeavor, you will not judge after your sight. You will not see like every other person is seeing. Your level of reasoning it's not based on just what you know. You were in the same class with your colleagues. You read the same books. You had the same teachers. But you will not see like they see. You will not see like what you were taught. You will see like what heaven saw. Ah. Let God open your eyes to what heaven has in store. Begin to pray. Open my eyes to heaven's ideas. Open my eyes. Heaven's ideas. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Heaven's way. Heaven's insight. Heaven's wisdom. Heaven's knowledge. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Rebosh, 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 rebosh. Rebosh, 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 rebosh. Eke to peteya. Eto peketeye. Graketo. I will not judge like me, man. 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 I will not see like me, man. I will not judge like me, man. Retu sota beye. Bekoto pehet, bekoto babahaya. Rebos, 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 rebos.
of the Holy Ghost. Nothing can stand on its path. When the anointing come upon you, the Bible calls Saul. Is it? He saw also among the prophets. When you have a new anointing, they will say, ah, when did he begin to do that research? Ah, is he also among the specialties in that department? When did he join the level of senior, senior consultant? Mama, mama, mama. Uh, when did he begin to know this? We were in the same class. The anointing marks you different. I want your faith to rise up. What are you trusting God for? You cannot leave this weekend the same. You cannot. Now listen to Psalm 89. Psalm 89, verse 20. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. When the anointing come upon your life, he says, my hand shall be established with him. <laughs> the anointing makes a difference. He brings establishment. My hand shall be established with him. Hallelujah. My arm also shall strengthen him. When the anointing comes, all your weaknesses go. Every area of weakness. And the weakness in presentation. In the you may know something. You don't know how to present it. That's weakness. But God will strengthen you. Amen. By the anointing. Amen. You don't know how to present. You don't know how to write a report. Some people don't know what you know. They package it well. And they are accepted. But yours will change this weekend. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 21. With whom my hand shall be established. My arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him. The son of women shall not afflict him. I will beat down his foe before his face. I will play them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. God is talking about liftings, favor, exaltation, defense, protection, and honor when the anointing comes. Analyze your feet of endeavor. Analyze your life, your marriage, your ministry. Analyze any aspect of your life. Oh God, I am not confident. I'm not comfortable at this level. I want a higher level. Amen. So when you cry to God in prayer, don't bring your vessels a few. Let your faith rise to what the anointing does is multi-sided. So you're asking God a new anointing. Don't just don't just limit it. Hallelujah. God will go before you. He will defend you. Where your proposals were refused, because of the anointing, you represent again. It will be favor. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go ahead to pray. Let's Amen. go ahead to pray. Thank you. Let the anointing begin to consume my weakness. Begin to consume my weakness.
If you have been given a notice, you have been warned a few times, your confidence has gone. In fact, that's why you're looking for another job. You're not so bold to stay where you are because you're not even sure if they will keep you. I want to pray for you. Come. Come. You don't have confidence about what you're doing. Either because they've given you warnings or they've, they've told you you're not good. You don't, you're not even sure what's going to happen. I want to pray with you. New anointing. Fresh grace. New anointing. Fresh grace. Inside you is the anointing. Inside you is the anointing. Inside you is the anointing. I'm telling you. Right there is the anointing. It makes a difference. It breaks the yoke. It makes you different. makes you new. makes you empowered. makes you favored. Presents you and goes ahead of you. That's your portion. In the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing. Please join me ministers to pray. Join me ministers to pray. I want you to, I want you to talk to the Lord. You say, this is not a joke. All right? Believe God. A change is happening. Talk to the Lord. Believe it. Receive it from him. All right? I want you to talk to the Lord. Believe it. Receive it. This is a divine encounter with God. I like you to believe God with all your heart. This is a change. This is, God has a favor. You are gifted. You are anointed. You are helped. You are, you are enabled. Men will run to your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please talk to the Lord. Just receive what he has in store for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Raukas. Raukas. Tobelaya. We receive grace. 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 Favor. Grace. Favor. Grace. Favor. Grace. Favor. Grace. Favor. Grace. Favor. Your struggle has come to an end. Your struggle has come to an end. When men have not celebrated, they will to celebrate you. Your fear has gone. God has gone before you. He has established you by his hand. Receive grace. I bind that demon spirit of fear and doubt and anxiety. Receive peace and favor, lifting and promotion, progress and speed. By the anointing. By the anointing. Yokes are broken. In the name of Jesus. Hey, anoint you afresh. Go in your might. Go in a new realm. Go with new vigor. Go with new favor. Go with new insight. In the name of Jesus. You are in the field of geology. God will give you new insight. In the name of Jesus, doors fling open to you. 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 You will rejoice from this day. You will rejoice in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Grace, favor, grace, favor, grace, help, speak, help, favor, speak. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Ghost. Oh. Rakataya. God is giving you fresh grace, fresh favor, fresh breakthrough, fresh help. Maracas. Regados. Ikede. Sharanglebos. Baikus. Ratayage, Reklobi Sotrahege, Shande Giko Sus Tropetahe. I speak favor, I speak grace, I speak speed, 
I speak help. I speak help from heaven. On your faith. 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 In the name of Jesus. open heaven. Fresh open heaven. God is releasing special skill, special gifting of your capacity in a new way. Alia, Agusu, Oteke, Abado, Ozike, Agusu, Egede, Agito, Obrege, Aklado, Sotoge, Egede, Azike, Egede, Ototeke, Gede, Mako, Grace, Kuda, Liga, Bolo, Aka, and Grebebebe Hoshim. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mandro best to topele, to let to topele. Ero pentro li ke zotro pe ke tape vos. Grace, 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 grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Kelebosh, Andrebos, Arikle doso pete, Palos so te pele ke zaste li ke zesto vi ke tro peleya, Regi ke leboso begedeya, Engrebabosh, Engrebabahaya. Breaks to you. Yeah. 
I'm waiting to do one thing before I go to sit down. And this is important. Now, I like everyone to look at me. Right? If you're staying in the spirit, you can stay there. But otherwise, if you are on your self consciousness, look at me. God is jealous over the anointing. God is jealous about the anointing. And this is a weekend of encounter. And we have only started. If you have a besetting sin in your life, I want to pray for you. You see, because it's going to be a futile exercise to go through this weekend with a besetting sin in your life. And I don't want to go sit down until I do that. That's why I've been waiting. All right? Okay. So don't be ashamed. We're not going to close our eyes. If you don't have anything, I'll go sit down. But if you do, I want you to come. God bless you. God bless you. This is a night and a weekend where none of us will go the same way. I'm, I cannot go the same way. It's impossible for me. All right? So anyone in that situation, please come. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just, yeah. Let's just, let's just. Jesus breaks the yoke. Same anointing. Same anointing will break yoke of sin. Yoke of sin. Yoke of besetting sin. Yes, Lord. This is the day of the Lord. Talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Tell him, tell God. Tell God exactly what it is. Tell God exactly what it is. Just talk to God about it. Talk to God about it right now. Talk to him about it. Talk to God about it. Talk to the Lord about it. Talk to God about it. As a change, as a deliverance, talk to God about it. The yoke is broken tonight. 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 In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that demon spirit. I break his hold. You are free in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of the sentence. You are free to serve the living God. Rauka tu rakata. Reike zaika topeluye. I confront the devil. I break his influence. I break his power from your life. In Jesus' name. You are free to serve the true and living God. Ah, in the name of Jesus, from today, you are free to serve the throne and living God. I pray the hold of that besetting sin in your life. In the name of Jesus, Raul Sade, free, we break the hold of the enemy in your life. Free from the grip of besetting sin in Jesus. Baraukate, baraukate. You are free. Show the top of it. Reike zato leke tu rapata leke zato peta lata ye. Freedom to serve the living God. From the yoke, from the bondage. La boya. Reke top of it. Reke top of it. I command the hold of the enemy to be broken from your life now. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of the enemy to be broken. 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 In the name of Jesus, receive freedom for serve the true and living God. Now be free from that bondage, from that yoke, from that oppression. In the name of Jesus, 
Be free to serve the true and living God all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Freedom. 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 You fast be lose your grip. Release that to serve the true and living God. In Jesus' name. Serve the true and living God. Serve the true and living God. Serve the true and living God. Free to serve God. Free to serve God. Free to serve God. Let the yoke be broken. 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 In the name of Jesus. Free, free to Sanko, free from yoke, yoke of sin, free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, in the name of Jesus, man, In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Every someone of you just looking at my face, just tell the devil, so and so. Nobody may hear what you're saying about this. Just tell the devil, so and so in my life is ended now. Say it. Say it. So and so, whatever that thing is, is ended now. Now, I confess it's gone. I confess I'm free from mention that aspect. I'm free from it from today in Jesus' name. I make up my mind to follow the Lord. I'm free to start the true and living God. Mention that, yes. that obstacle. I'm yes. declared free from it. I'm free from it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We command you are free to serve the true and living God. Amen. We decree the grip of the enemy is broken from your life. Amen. Go and be free. Amen. And sin no more. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.